So hello, in this video hopefully I'll be oxidizing stainless steel to dichromate. Dichromates are a very useful compound, even though they're highly carcinogenic. They serve a, a variety of very useful applications and quite, quite a few of them, you can't replace them with other compounds. So hopefully I'll be able to do this. I've got a whole um, lot of stainless steel here. It's 18% chromium from what I can tell. Um, and while it may not be profitable to do it on a small scale, I have a few knives and forks that I've saved from being dumped. So don't feel bad about, um, I'm not ruining my uh, parents' kitchen cutlery set or anything. So we'll see how this goes. The first step is to get all the ions in solution. So there will be 18% uh, chromium, 8% nickel, and the rest is iron for the most part. There's a few, it's not all, in this it's not all um, the same type of stainless steel. A few of them, such as this, no, a few, a few of the, uh, this one, um, is a different type, um, A1 stainless steel, it's labelled as which also contains, I believe, phosphorus and sulfur. It's been added to the uh, alloy. So hopefully that doesn't screw with the, um, the process too much. So I'm adding some hydrochloric acid to the steel. Um, that's probably enough in there actually. Um, this should turn all the metal into irons eventually. Um, problem with the plastic bucket is I can't heat it very well. But I have no real uh, rush for this so I can, I can leave this for as long as it needs to uh, eventually dissolve all the metal. I have no idea how much hydrochloric I need to add, but I can just keep adding it. I mean, I have five litres here, so um, we'll see how this goes. So we're about oh, 15 minutes in and we can see that the solution is already a very thick green which would be of course mainly due to the iron. Still got a long way to go though. So you can see here that even though it started off quite reacting quite slowly it is um, pretty vigorous right now. It's, it's uh, getting along pretty well. It's driving off quite a bit of the hydrochloric acid fume, so I'm glad I'm outside and don't have to hang around this a lot. It's not going to rain tonight, so I'm just going to leave it outside and uh, let it just do its thing and hopefully tomorrow I should just have a, a solution of uh, metal irons. So it's in two buckets there. The bottom bucket is full of hot water just to heat the reaction to make sure it um, carries along nicely. It's fuming quite a lot now. You can see the uh, hydrochloric acid fumes coming off. Obviously it's producing a lot of hydrogen, but that's clear, so you're not going to be able to see that. So the fumes are all hydrochloric acid and um, uh, water vapor. So it's not very nice to breathe. Also it's intensely uh, corrosive to all metals. So, well not copper, but um, so all steel and iron. So I had to move it away from uh, my lab and my shed because I'm worried about um, the cars and that sort of thing because it's about a litre of hydrochloric acid in there and it's constantly putting off these fumes. I'm worried if that goes all night <laughs> inside an iron shed it's going to do some damage. So this has been running for a bit over two weeks now. I reckon it's just about all reacted. Well it wouldn't have all reacted but I'm going to give up now. Let's see 
see a small bit of steel at the bottom. I'll weigh this and uh, see how much sodium carbonate I need for the next step. This is going to take ages. <laughs> so I have the two uh, containers of the carbonates, metal carbonates. So hopefully this is the first step where we'll be able to extract chromium by itself uh, away from the other, the nickel and the iron. We're going to do that by adding a hypochlorite solution, a calcium hypochlorite which hopefully oxidise the chromium carbonate to um, well, calcium chromate and leave the so the, the, the chromium carbonate to calcium chromate, yeah and leave the iron and the nickel as the carbonates and so these here, and this is full of, of the metal carbonates um, they've been washed, so a lot of all the sodium carbonate should hopefully be out as well as um, the byproducts of uh, previous reactions such as sodium chloride and such. So I ditched the method I was trying to do earlier. It was working, it was just uh, taking ages and I wasn't working as well as it probably could have. So here I've just put it all in a bucket. There's all the required hypochlorite uh, in there. It's about 700 grams of calcium hypochlorite, as well as all the, the metal carbonates. So I'll have to filter this all again. But um, after that, it's just a matter of boiling it down. I should get some chromate crystals. The reaction is looking quite odd at the moment. Um, there's a distinct smell of chlorine, and I'm probably going to have to get a larger bucket if this uh, decides to foam up any further. So you can see quite clearly that it's all brown now, whereas before there was a definite green solid. And that would have been the, um, the iron 2 carbon, it has all been oxidised iron 3, which is this uh, brown colour, so it's making it all look very uh, muck-like. It's getting quite vigorous right now, there's a definite smell of chlorine, um, and that's a train. <laughs> 